Hello, everybody. Welcome to our R&D session number 12. Um, my name is Alexandre Neto. I'm from New R&D, and um, we are the, the R&D arm of uh, the EDP group. And um, today we'll be exploring the, the topic of blockchain in the energy business. Um, I just wanted to to share with you that uh, this, uh, as I said, this is the 12th session, session we, we've held. Um, we've presented lots of our projects, uh, namely H2020 projects uh, about uh, different subjects, robotics, flexibility, data, and also uh, some topics uh, that we have been exploring and debating in the, in the last uh, sessions, such as uh, hydrogen, ocean energy, battery storage, and today blockchain. So I hope you have a great session. I will pass the, the screen to my colleague Paul Edge from, from New R&D also that will be uh, leading the, the session and the, the dynamic uh, with this dynamic. And um, we have uh, three guests that we will, we will just present you. And uh, so Paul, thank you very much and you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you very much to EDP New for this opportunity and to the Digital Global Unit for organizing this and also to the virtual blockchain community for, for helping provide all the, all the speakers uh, and the contacts. So uh, this session is exploring how blockchain can, will affect the energy business. So although people like talking about prices of Bitcoin and things like that. We're going to try and avoid talking about any market, any uh, market prices or how things are going to go up or down in the future, because usually those sort of discussions don't age very well. Um, but to keep this on a non-technical uh, level, we're banning the words that you can see on the screen at the moment. Uh, I'd love to talk about these words, but uh, I think to keep it open for everybody, if a uh, uh, we're, you'll lose points if you utter, utter any of these words. Okay, so um, our speakers today uh, are from EDPR, from Ernst & Young and for, from the Energy Web Foundation. So from EDPR we've got Jesus uh, Vecino, uh, from Ernst & Young we've got Giuseppe Peroni and from Energy Web we've got Yanis Villacos. Um, and well, I'll, we'll be talking to them in, in, a, in a five minutes time. But first of all, I just want to do a quick overview of why blockchain is interesting. So the, the new thing that blockchain did was, is, was to solve two difficult problems. So if we to start off, if you think about it in, in cryptocurrency terms, uh, it stops it, allow, it eliminates double spend. So that means Alice can send some money to Bob, but she can't send the same amount of money to Charlie. So that's one problem that blockchain solves. And the second one is that Charlie can't pretend to be Alice and send her money to Bob. So these, this is the, the general way how it's thought in cryptocurrency, but blockchain is more general than cryptocurrency. So on the one side, Eliminated double spend you can think about as uh, as a uniqueness or having something having an identity, and on the other side, just for forbidding spending by others, you can think about this as being control. So, blockchain enables digital things to be unique and to be controlled. So, um, if you have uniqueness, then you can have a digital twin. So that means that the the, the digital resource is identified um, and it's it's impossible to duplicate digitally. Um, it's very easy to copy data, but it's it's impossible to 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 fake being this uh, this identity. Um, and the owner of a particular resource can be identified using using the same same ideas. Uh, and what blockchain also allows in, in cryptocurrency if you own a coin then you can, can control the coin but what that's not necessary 
in in more general terms that if you have control of a resource it doesn't mean you own it and vice versa ownership doesn't imply control necessarily and so that means that things like computers can control other things um, and why is it important that ownership and control are thought like this well there's two very large companies uber and amazon web services that have completely changed the the business model so uber is is totally about control of how their business works but they own hardly any assets and on the other hand you've got amazon web services who don't control their assets but they own everything that the that they own the disk drives and the data centers so even though they these two companies don't use blockchain currently it blockchain allows this sort of business to exist and in the future this is what will um what will be the the driving force behind why blockchain is useful for business so um to explore more of this i'd like to pass the control over over to to Jeppe and uh, for him to talk about uh the the blockchain how blockchain is used in Ernst and Young and how how it'll be the future of energy um would you like to take control Giuseppe yes thank you thank you Paul hello everybody thanks for uh, for the invite uh, I'll share a couple of pages in order to to share with you our uh, point of view about uh, blockchain uh, blockchain technology and how we think that could be useful uh, uh, to address the key principal challenges of of this of this technology into the energy uh, business. So um, in this last year, we have worked in order to move from the classical uh, um, initial initiatives based on blockchain to define a major concept. Uh, where the maximum power of blockchain could be the possibility to create an ecosystem. An ecosystem, for example, between different actors involved in a process with the capabilities to notarize, tokenize and automate the process thanks to the principal key elements of this technology. So, um, for example, one of the key areas uh, that uh, we are uh, uh, working is the definition of the physical environment and to and uh, and into the digital environment. So, for example, uh, this new concept of decentralized finance is uh, one of the key areas uh, that we are exploring. We think that the future of blockchain should be on the public ledger and uh, should be a, a global infrastructure li like uh, we are uh, non internet so internet of value based on this public ledger and uh, one of the key one of the key thing about uh, the possibility to show uh, the uh, blockchain uh, um, solution could be the uh, realization of a decentralized finance. So decentralized finance is based on a smart contract. So the smart contract, as you know, is uh, an informatical object when we can digitize the business to activate these uh, uh, token contracts between the parties and obtain the uh, tokenization of an asset. So that could be very interesting because uh, thanks to the uh, decentralized finance, we can execute the processes with integrated uh, business rules, for example, in the field of land money, in the field of lease asset, uh, pay interest the issue asset. So it's important um, uh, to uh, identify uh, that uh, um, exist 
a, a good starting point to create uh, and moving from the classical centralization of the services and move in a concept, in a new paradigm of decentralization of the service. Obviously, this new concept, uh, especially in a big challenge, because uh, now exist some uh, different uh, topics should be addressed uh, in order to stay this concept like the enterprise application and on blockchain. And the three the main area of focus uh, should regard the regulation, obviously, and the efficiency uh, of a, a public ledger based on the concept of uh, uh, validation of transaction, respect uh, the fluctuation of the cost of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, and is that 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 just turning is off your video? The capability to offer uh, a way um, to extract the transaction between two parties. Can you hear me better? Uh, I think it's, yeah, if you turn off your video, I think. It, we might be able to hear you better. Yes, you're cutting up a little bit. Okay, okay. So as I said, uh, it, it's important. Uh, Much better. Um, okay, uh, it's important, uh, as I said, uh, to define um, and approach this technology in order uh, um, to move from the classical use of the blockchain as an innovative and disruptive technologies to move in an environment where we can build and where we can uh, identify uh, new ways to automate process, but at the heart of these technologies to create ecosystem. As I said, DeFi would be a way uh, to, to move into this uh, new paradigm and the tokenization and the automation through smart contract is uh, on the basis of this uh, transformation um, evolution for the business of company. It's important to think so, uh, so that the, uh, for now there are some challenges. Uh, the challenge is about the efficiency to use uh, a public ledger, the challenge is about the regulation and the challenge is about the possibility to use blockchain to offer a private and security environment between two parties that want to share the cryptographical data without the access to other third parties in a concept of ecosystem. So in this direction, uh, as EY, we launched uh, a, a program. This program is a baseline, and uh, it's a program to um, limitate the, the, uh, the cost uh, of uh, blockchain transaction, to study what are new ways to encrypt the transaction, and to uh, preserve sensitive data on, on blockchain. So the, the baseline protocol support the enterprise and uh, as in this case of uh, a regulated market uh, like uh, energy, in order to offer a, a new paradigm to uh, increase the uh, importance and the, uh, and the cost of the transaction, uh, enabling uh, uh, through uh, a consensus, consensus, consensus mechanism. And this consensus mechanism is based not on the classical proof of work, based on the consumption of energy of the CPU, of the laptop, of the servers connected to the network, uh, different nodes that should validate the transaction, but in a probabilistic uh, scenario uh, with the zero knowledge proof. Zero knowledge proof is another mechanism to validate transaction on blockchain. And uh, with the uh, zero knowledge proof, we can move to the classical access to the data to validate this information. Uh, we uh, replacing sensitive data with proofs. So that's it important because proofs uh, can maintain the right level of privacy without losing uh, the control of this information between the actors involved. The second aspect uh, when we approach a public ledger like Ethereum, like Bitcoin, because as I said at the, at the starting of my, of my uh, presentation, we think that the future should be based on the public ledger like we know today to the internet is the securitization of private messaging. So, uh, for example, in the case of uh, trading processes, in the case of uh, 
green certificates uh, in order to prove uh, that this certificate uh, is uh, related to renewable energy or in the other uh, uh, case when I want uh, to um, securize transaction, reconciliate uh, amount uh, between the two parties, one key thing is the securization uh, of the messaging. So with this new protocol, it's possible to communicate without leaving a permanent, a permanent record on chain. Blockchain is uh, leveraged as a middleware. So it's possible to sign the transaction to proof and complete the um, information and synchronize uh, all status uh, on chain on the network, but also we can maintain data off chain. So it's important because the company uh, shouldn't uh, see the blockchain as uh, another layer that substitutes the actual uh, blueprint of uh, IT legacy system, but we can maintain data off-chain and maintain on-chain with, with this token only the metadata. And obviously, last but not least, the power of a proxy way encryption. Just to finalize my, 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 uh, my quote, I would, uh, I would uh, um, highlight, for example, a, a, real, uh, a real case that we are approaching with uh, a company in in US, a uh, transmission operator company, on the case of a green certificate. So in this case, it's important to use a, a technology ledger, a public ledger like blockchain, in order to guarantee that this certificate uh, um, are related to specific uh, um, renewable energy. So we connect the blockchain IoT and blockchain because IoT can guarantee the Oracle to access the data and uh, connect physical layer and digital layer in all phases of this project. At the end, the final result is to have the tokenization of this metadata to obtain a digital certificate uh, with the proof of all information linked to the origin and, the, uh, and to enable a trusting relationship between the parties involved, the vendors, transmitters, distributors, and, uh, and, uh, and the trader. And so they sit a, a new way also to build an ecosystem for, for the trading of this, of this certificate. So that's it uh, important in order to reduce the efficiency, uh, to, to augment the efficiency of the process, to reduce the time spent in paper and quality uh, control of the documents, but also to uh, evolve in a new way to, to build um, application, enterprise application on this public ledger that can offer a new way in terms of new revenue stream or in terms of cost reduction. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. Uh, your last example, uh, we'll have a, a little more detail from uh, EDPR uh, uh, on that subject. So uh, thank you for introducing that. Uh, now can we go over to, to Yanis and he, he will talk, talk a bit about the Energy Web Foundation and how blockchain is, uh, is relevant to, to energy management. Yes, thank you, Paul. Uh, thanks, first of all, for the invitation and for having me today. Yeah, I will I will follow up from the last comment uh, by Giuseppe that, yeah, the, the, the way forward, we also believe is, is a public blockchain. This is why in Energy Web, we are, we are let's say, have developed in the past years uh, a public blockchain especially tailored for the energy system. So uh, what, what we have identified quite early is this shift from the old and traditional grid architecture where you have, let's say, unidirectional flow of energy from, from the generation uh, part uh, towards the, the end customers uh, to a more, uh, let's say, bi-directional uh, grid uh, where you have uh, different assets, distributed energy resources connected uh, in uh, the various points of uh, the grid. So in this architecture, you see that the, the, the end customer is in the center of this ecosystem. Uh, so this is a drastic and a radical change compared to the traditional uh, model. So this, this slide, I think it's, it's one of the most important ones. Uh, it was uh, um, recently verified by, by a report on uh, DERs, distributed energy resources, uh, published by Bloomberg. Uh, 
today we are we are facing uh, let's say a, a disruptive uh, change uh, between uh, the way that utilities and customers are investing. So uh, right now, customers collectively, or in the, in the next years to come, customers collectively will be investing in energy-related assets like EVs, uh, residential charging infrastructure, uh, battery storage, uh, smart thermostats, um, and so on. Uh, collectively, we will spend and invest more money than the utilities will, will invest in the traditional um, distribute, uh, distribution grid or transmission grid uh, assets. This is a radical change, and this change is mainly driven from the fact that DERs um, are already picking up, and, uh, and you can see everywhere charging points, charging infrastructure, uh, residential uh, storage, uh, to appear. So this is a, a radical change uh, that uh, and, and a challenge that um, looks for, for an answer. Uh, so back uh, in 2017, uh, we launched uh, the Energy Web Foundation, which is a non-profit organization uh, that was initially uh, incorporated by uh, the uh, Rocky Mountain Institute, a think tank in the US, and uh, Grid Sing Singularity, uh, a startup in Berlin. And the mission of Energy Web is to provide open source technology based on a decentralized approach uh, to facilitate uh, the energy transition in uh, the energy sector and to support also uh, a low carbon energy future. So what we do is like together with our members, we, we develop, we co-develop open source uh, software based on decentralized solutions uh, to promote and foster the energy transition. And talking about members, we, we are really proud and excited to have um, over 100 market participants from, from around the globe, uh, from the financial sector, from uh, the VC uh, vector, um, sector, from the energy the sector, of course, the automotive, uh, to support our mission. So we have some, uh, some really big names in, in our ecosystem, uh, like Shell, uh, Vodafone. Uh, last week, we announced uh, the onboarding of Volkswagen Group in our ecosystem, so we do not focusing uh, only on the utilities in the traditional sense, but we are focusing on all actors that have a key role in this energy transition, meaning uh, EV OEMs, uh, telecom providers like Vodafone, uh, big corporates, uh, even from the oil and gas sector like Shell. So we would like to have on board as many as uh, possible participants to drive together the, the energy uh, transition. So what we, we, we develop and what we provide to foster this transition is this digital infrastructure layer. So we, we uh, quite early identified uh, a niche uh, need in the market. So we know that uh, everywhere we can see energy assets like smart meters, smart thermostats, um, smart appliances that can uh, be controlled remotely through the internet, uh, we can have EVs, um, wind parks, uh, solar farms, and so on. So we have uh, millions, billions of energy assets, and we also have energy markets that are currently uh, that are currently operate uh, in EU, in the states, uh, flexibility markets, wholesale markets, and ancillary services markets. So what is missing is the, this digital infrastructure layer that will connect the energy assets. To the energy markets in a transparent and trusted manner and i would like to underline these two words transparency and trust because this is i think where the the added value of a blockchain based solution comes because in these wholesale markets in these flexibility markets usually we have um, parties that need to work together uh, and in some cases these parties have competitive interests so you need to have in place a sort of neutral, decentralized infrastructure that it will guarantee uh, the necessary trust and transparency needed uh, by these markets to operate properly in a regulated environment, of course. So what is our motto? Our motto is create open source technology to allow any energy customer 
through any energy asset to participate in any energy market. So we do not like vendor lock-ins, we do not like proprietary solutions, proprietary pro protocols. This is why all of our technology is uh, available uh, as open source. And uh, to conclude this brief introduction, so to set the context, um, what is one of the, the core principles and the core elements of our stack is uh, the concept of the decentralized identifiers. So digital identities implemented through this concept of decentralized identifiers is of paramount importance uh, in our energy uh, web ecosystem. Uh, and how, how you can trans translate these digital identities like assigning to each and every energy asset or market participant a digital passport. And this digital passport has information not only about the asset itself, like its serial number, uh, the model number, the capacity of its battery, um, the production or the consumption and so on, but also it holds information about uh, the ability of the asset to participate or not in a certain market. So it is a very important to have a way, a trusted decentralized way that an asset that has been onboarded uh, and registered by one market participant to be also trusted by another market participant. And this is uh, only possible by using uh, decentralized identities. And we definitely believe that there is no better way to anchor and handle decentralized identities than a blockchain. So as I mentioned, this is uh, how these digital passports for assets and market participants uh, work. So. Uh, as Paul mentioned in the, in the beginning, through these digital passports, we create the digital twin of any energy asset. So this digital twin can hold information, not only static information like model number or calculated information, or for example, uh, the state of charge of a battery, but also real time information about, about the asset. And based on uh, an authentication process that happens on the energy web chain, which is a public blockchain, we can authorize or not an asset to participate in a certain market. So we provide the tools uh, using open standards. So for the for our decentralized identifiers library, we were uh, using the WD3C standards. So we're using open source standards uh, whenever these standards are available uh, to allow users and asset owners and assets to create their own identities. We, we, we also do not like, as I mentioned before, uh, to create any sort of vendor lock-in. This is why we support any sort of identity uh, from any other identity provider. For example, you can bring in your identity from Sovereign. You can bring in your identity from uh, uh, Microsoft. So it's bring your own identity solution and this will work seamlessly with, with our energy web chain. So this was uh, a brief introduction. Thank you very much for your attention and Paul, the floor is back to you. Thank you. Paul, I guess you're mute. Hi, sorry, thank you. Right, now I'll share uh, a video from EDPR. Um, oops, I'll try again. I need to include the sound, there we are. Okay. EDP Group and El Corte Inglés have joined forces to implement groundbreaking blockchain technology in Spain. This revolutionary tool will allow Europe's leading department store group to identify in real time the source of the renewable energy consumed at its stores in Sevilla and Malaga. The 100% clean energy, which will be supplied to the two establishments, will be produced by five EDP Renewables wind farms located in Andalusia, with an installed capacity of nearly 170 megawatts. This pilot program, which will act as a sort of digital notary, its role will be to validate the time the green energy source is consumed, while certifying that the information provided to the commercial distribution company is accurate. 
Blockchain technology is a data storage scheme that uses cryptography to ensure records are encrypted, so the already sealed information cannot be modified or its authenticity and integrity questioned. With this system, both energy producers and consumers will be able to instantly certify the energy's green origin, as well as consult firsthand the methods used to generate it. In order to certify the renewable origin of each megawatt consumed by customers, the launch of this pilot program will run parallel with the traditional guarantees of origin issued by the National Commission on Markets and Competition. For EDP Group, this agreement with El Corte Inglés strengthens the alliance and excellent synergy that has been maintained over the 16-year business relationship between both companies. Blockchain technology will help transform the energy market while ensuring its sustainable origin. Thank you. Now I'll pass the control over to Jesus to find to add some more color to that uh, very colorful presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you, Paul, and thank you all for for the opportunity of being here and presenting this project. Um, so well, yeah, as the the, the colorful video, I, I thought that it was a nice um, way of introducing the project. But I would also like to to comment um, some details about the project. So. Um, First, uh, it's based on the Energy Web uh, Foundation or the Energy Web Token or, or the Energy Web Chain. Okay, um, so uh, I was very happy to hear that uh, Ionis was going to be here. Okay, because this uh, blockchain world uh, uh, related to the energy sector is is very small. So at the end, um, we I end up uh, knowing each other. Um, and about the project, um, as as the video was mentioning, um, the key a part or the or the value proposition of the project is to improve the official press mechanism uh, regarding guarantees of origin but it's also true that the guarantees of origin are the only official or is the only official mechanism uh, currently in place so that's why we have to run this application in parallel with the traditional guarantees of origin by why this project? What's the value proposition? There are two main pillars for, for the, this project. First is that um, we uh, identify um, the need to bring the authentication um, or the tracking of, of energy sources closer to real time, right? Because um, through the official mechanism of guarantees of origin, the process usually takes several months or even or usually up to one year okay so in the meantime um the customers can uh, say that that their consumption is is coming from renewable sources so that's a, a real business need that we uh, we as edpr uh, but together with edp commercial um and edp innovation okay we identify in the group that was a uh, key okay and that we wanted to address it and the other pillar, uh, or the, the, the other pillar for the value proposition of the project, was to be able to communicate effectively um, uh, that a customer is uh, consuming from renewable energy sources, that mm, a particular customer is um, promoting uh, the installation of, of renewable energy facilities by. Um, buying this kind of certificates right because at the end a guarantee for origin is just a paper right so a paper is difficult to to be sold to the general public on the other hand through this application closer to real time and in a very powerful colorful way we can um, offer this this application to to end customers to industrial customers mostly so they can um, promote their corporate social responsibility policies to the general public right uh, actually, the, the, the idea with the court English was to uh, show this application in the biggest screens that they have in, in the malls, okay, but also in their uh, embed, embed this application in their web page and in, in our web page, in, in the EDP group web page, okay. So everybody could uh, see it. Um, and basically, those were the, the two main pillars, uh, the value proposition of, of this project improving 
uh, let's say the official mechanism of guarantees of origin uh, by um, bringing closer to real time this authentication, but also uh, allowing our customers to effectively communicate their efforts in being uh, renewable, right? Um, this project is now, uh, let's say, managed by different or co-managed by different departments within the group. And just for those of you uh, who belong to, to, to the EDP group, uh, it started as a pilot project, an MVP project uh, uh, with the DGU, uh, Digital uh, Factory, okay? And now uh, we are um, managing in EDPR, in, in EDP Commercial, and also EDP Innovasal, okay? And well, um, I don't want to, to spend all the time um, on, on this presentation that, that the purpose of the video was just to introduce the project. And I think that it's worthy to, to leave the rest of the time for, for questions and, and general discussion. So feel free to, to ask any, any doubt about this, this project. Okay. Jesus, can I ask how the El Corte Inglés, the, the client, how did they react to the solution? And how's the market yeah. reacted to it? Yes, um, well, the Corte, El Corte Inglés reacted uh, very positive, pos positively, sorry. Um, they were keen to initiate the project, okay, and the communication was, um, in all the communication was focused on how we could launch this, this project as soon as possible. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic arrived, okay, so most of El Corte Inglés malls were closed, so that difficulties in the launching of the project. Um, they changed the CEO in the meantime, so th we, we faced different difficulties okay through the process but they were keen to 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 know more about this project uh, and to launch this this pilot project because uh, they also thought that uh, the kind of um power that this application bring to the group to the court english uh, was significantly higher than than um, redeeming guarantees of origin okay so they were very willing to show in real time, as, as I was saying, uh, the, the real uh, match between the generation of our wind farms and the consumption of El Corte Inglés malls. Okay? Um, it's also true that as this was a pilot project, let's say that the um, economic side was more related to uh, advertising, publicity, publicity etc than on real, let's say, cash flows between uh, EDP and El Corte Inglés, okay? So that's very important because now that we are addressing um, or trying to, to, to reach different customers, uh, we as EDP, actually EDP Commercial is trying to address different customers with this solution, we are facing some issues to monetize this tool, okay? Um, because uh, the actual value of warranties of origin is not very high, right? So um, people uh, are not used to pay a lot for certifying that their consumption is renewable through the official mechanism. So we are facing some difficulties to be able to monetize um, this application, uh, to scale up this application to a lot of customers because at the end they think, okay, this is interesting. They always uh, think that, but when they, it's time to, to pay for it, uh, we are facing some some issues, right? So that's the the current status. There is a lot of interest in the market. Um, probably the kind of customers that are interested in this kind of application at this stage is not a general a general customer that uh, we can have in in EDP commercial. So probably uh, the target group is more like Google, Amazon these kind of big corporations that uh, put a lot of effort in, in, in corporations and responsibilities uh, and, and in promoting that they are green, okay? But mm, an industrial customer is more, or at least in Spain and Portugal, is still more focused on just being cost effective um, and source their, their electricity as with the lowest price possible than paying an extra fee let's say, for, for having this kind of application. Uh, we have a Q&A question. How are 
network network losses coped with, with under this system? Um, that's a very good question. I mean, there are two two processes being run in parallel in the blockchain, okay? And there are four meters involved for just a transaction, okay? We have um, the first meter is the one that we have our wind farm that is managed by ETPR, okay? So that brings, let's say, the first measure of the energy that is being produced um, in, 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 in our facilities, okay, in, in our assets. Then there is another meter at uh, El Corte Inglés Mall or whatever customer, okay, who is uh, reading their, their consumption. The algorithm they developed in this application takes into account um, the expected losses there, okay, but uh, everything um, is finally solved when we use the official meters of um, the CNMC in Spain, okay? So, as, as I was saying, the, the application is being run in parallel of the guarantees of origin. And at the end, when, um, when we reach finality in the blockchain, we don't do it with our own meters. We are doing it with the meters, the official meters, um, just to ensure that there is a perfect match between what is being uh, sealed in the blockchain and the emission and redemption of guarantees of origin. So at the end, the algorithm takes into account an estimated uh, measure of the losses that is in the transmission grid for, the, let's say, the close to real time um, matching. Okay, but when it's time to reach fina finality in the, in the blockchain, um, everything is done with the official meters of the CNMC, so um, there is no issue there because it's, let's say, being officially certified that we are um, generating, let's say, the exact amount of energy that uh, the, the guarantees of origin that are being emitted, okay? Um, while we're on this topic, I'll, I'll just ask another question from the audience. Uh, how close to real time is this information? Okay, um, uh, talking with the Corte Inglés, that was one of the first questions that arose, okay? Um, we are doing it uh, with the Corte Inglés every hour, okay? But, um, and maybe Janos can, can give some, some more details later on, but this is something that could be done every minute, for instance. So there is no, let's say, limitation there, okay? Because the, the proof of authority uh, consensus algorithm that that is behind all this is very fast. It's not like Bitcoin, okay? That was also key for us to, in, in order to be able to do a lot of transactions. If we, do, if we want to do it for thousands of customers every single minute, we need a, a speed, right? So that was one of our concerns. Um, and we are doing it every hour just because uh, El Corte Inglés thought that doing it every minute was a, it did amazing, okay, so, but it could be done. Uh, Paul, may I, I add something here? Of course. On the real-time information, so this is, I think, closely related to some, uh, uh, let's say, discussions around uh, if blockchain solutions can, can scale, what are the performance limitations of blockchain-based solutions? So, uh, we have already deployed projects that involved uh, getting uh, activation signals uh, to, to, be, to be delivered to devices every two seconds with, um, uh, let's say, 500 millisecond end-to-end -end latency. So, this is actually real-time real -time information. And we didn't have any issue because we, we only use blockchain when it is absolutely necessary. So, even with real-time data, for example, imagine a, a flexibility market um, that is a balancing market that needs to uh, receive, um, let's say, flexibility offers by assets for a 15-minute interval market, and you can consider, let's say, millions of assets. So it is not possible, and it is not advised to store all this information on chain because you do not need this information on chain. What you need on chain is the actual 
offers that were activated. So you have a proof uh, to show uh, at every single point in the future and to prove that yes, this offer was actually included in the activation bundle and this is why you, you were compensated. So uh, what we believe is like blockchain technology uh, makes sense uh, for specific uh, to, to solve specific problems within uh, within a greater um, uh, solution. So uh, I would like to quote, uh, let's say that if the only the only tool that we have is a hammer, suddenly the whole world becomes to, to look like a nail. So we do believe that uh, solutions, decentralized solutions, and blockchain technology is part of these centralized solutions for solving real-world pro um, uh, problems related to the energy sector it, it is the way forward. Thank you. Uh, just, just, to on, oh, sorry. Yes. No, just to comment on that, I mean, um, uh, the, the key part of the project as it was trying to bring closer to real time this kind of certification um, and it's important to to highlight uh, what Ioannis was saying right before uh, that actually EDP is not participating in the validation process that, uh, that, that, that takes place in this application where there is a match between the energy produced and generated. We just let's say give the data to the to the application but as it's decentralized uh, and is validated by oil, but by all the nodes that uh, Johannes was mentioning before, uh, uh, we thought that this could bring a lot of trans and transparency to our customers because we are certifying that not because we are saying so, but because other validators or other nodes, the blockchain, is saying so. That's why it was also important for us to to have this kind of application in the blockchain. Because, of course, this is something that EDP could do alone, right? But um, the key words again are transparency and trust. Uh, Giuseppe, can I ask what, um, what projects you're involved in that have successfully scaled uh, and that the clients are happy with? Yes, Paul, uh, one of the key areas of the project that we have uh, achieved good results uh, with the client uh, are related to the use of blockchain, as said also by Ioannis, in the way to maintain data of chain and uh, have on blockchain only the, the token that can trigger uh, uh, automation of the processes. So in this sense, uh, we have worked a lot on a project in the field of traceability in terms of asset management of the supply chain. In the case of energy, it could be an application about inventory management, asset management that could be useful in terms of uh, networking and operation related uh, to, the, to the networking. And uh, the uh, other areas uh, uh, that uh, we, are, uh, we are developing, uh, is uh, about uh, um, the, the field of, uh, um, of procurement. So uh, that's it, uh, one of the area that we are, uh, we, are, uh, we are implementing in the past and that we think uh, could be, um, as we say uh, uh, ever, that blockchain should be what the RT is for a single company. No, blockchain should be the, the technology that can create this common ledger, uh, and especially in the field of procurement, in the field of uh, uh, the activities on, on finance can offer uh, a new way, a trusted way between the headquarters of a company and the subsidiaries or between companies and the suppliers. That are two, two, two areas that uh, um, we are uh, we are exploring in the past and we think that in the future, thanks to the uh, capacity to evolve the logic of uh, uh, reduction of the cost, the logic about the uh, private messaging and the securitization of this, uh, this data, uh, leveraging also on fungible or not fungible token can be achieved uh, with this uh, with this technology and can reduce uh, the, the the cost for the for the company respect the current and traditional and traditional process.
Um, can, I, can I ask a, a general question about how you think blockchain will change the way business is conducted in five years' time? What, what would be the what would be the big changes that are that um, firstly, what's the problems that currently exist, like high costs of using the blockchain and available technology, but also what will be the future? Um, what will be the future of any, the energy business uh, in five years' time? Um, Yes, I think that uh, there are uh, two uh, two key uh, innovation that uh, will drive growth uh, in the coming years of, of blockchain. The first is the programmable public blockchain services, and the second is the enterprise digital transformation. Uh, as I introduced uh, in the starting point, uh, um, the DeFi could be the starting uh, of this uh, of this process. Uh, because uh, uh, it's based on the capacity to get uh, the programmability of uh, the tokens and the capability to reduce the risk appetite uh, related to uh, this kind of uh, uh, sharing of data, maintaining, uh, um, maintaining the data into the uh, legacy system of the company and sharing only the proof that can activate the process in financial services, but also to link on a real world uh, for the for the asset. The second, uh, the second topic that we think should be revolution, uh, revolutionary for uh, for the blockchain environment uh, is the tokenization. So the example and recent initiative on uh, non fungible tokens uh, is another way to create process fully in the digital environment. And after the capabilities to integrate uh, information and process uh, um, in the different uh, uh, context, no? uh, creating a, a blockchain uh, open community and uh, offering a specific uh, specific services uh, uh, on the on the on the on the main net on the public uh, on the public ledger. Uh, so the transaction should move. Uh, uh, with uh, these two two areas in our in our uh, major major trends, the first, as I said, is the decentralized finance. The second is uh, the evolution of financial services, uh, leveraging also the uh, central bank digital currency, for example. The third is the tokenization with non fungible tokens. Yeah, Paul, if I may add uh, also mm, something from, from, from our, let's say, vision regarding the, the future. Um, I think uh, one important aspect uh, would be interoperability because we will see more and more, uh, let's say, uh, organizations or even large uh, groups of uh, enterprises coming together to create a solution and in, in many of the cases, uh, these groups of enterprises will have their own, let's say, blockchain. So we need to have some sort of interoperability in place in order to, let's say, leverage um, all the benefits that are provided by these decentralized technologies. Also, I think DIDs, decentralized identifiers, will play a key role. Uh, we see also uh, that many, many governments uh, worldwide are, let's say, looking at blockchain-based solutions for uh, creating um, the national identities of, of individuals. Also, uh, each and every EV that lives in a, the factor of an OEM comes uh, with its own uh, identity on board in the form of a SIM card that is installed in the car. And I think the third, um, the third, Topic that, at least from from our perspective, uh, is is one of, of great importance is how you handle default because blockchain is a way of providing services uh, to utilities, to end customers, and so on. So how how you ensure that you have in, in place a service level agreement? So uh, recently we we announced that uh, we are working towards the so-called decentralized SLA where the, let's say, the nodes of a blockchain network will, will work together uh, to, to, uh, to make sure that they provide the services that they are, uh, let's say, uh, are obliged uh, to, to deliver to, to, to the ecosystem.
Thank you. Okay, thank okay, you. On my side. Yeah, yes, over to you. Just I, very quickly, as we are running out of time, but I totally agree with with uh, Ivanos and Giuseppe. Um, regarding the energy sector, I mean, for sure, I think that once blockchain is, let's say, in the mainstream and and the general public is using this kind of uh, services that are um, run through blockchain applications, for sure, customers or end customers will have more power to negotiate. Um, uh, more transparently and with more freedom, um, a, a lot of contracts, let's say, or a lot of transactions, because now there are, I mean, in the wholesale electricity market, there are a lot of entry barriers, right? It's true that there are some difficulties there. I mean, um, I mean, there are a lot of projects right now, as far as I know, that are trying to, to, to let's say, have economic sense or bring economic sense to distributed uh, networks and um, consumers. Uh, and at the end, the, the key part there is how to uh, organize and coordinate with the wholesale electricity market, because for sure there are uh, some purchases to be made uh, in the to the general, let's say, uh, wholesale electricity system, and also with the TSO. And this is key for me. Ioannis was saying before um, how blockchain can improve the the imbalance process system or, or balancing system, okay? And for me, it's key because a lot of projects are just focused right now on substituting or being, uh, let's say, a complementary solution for the wholesale electricity market in which small customers, um, uh, prosumers, etc., can participate in and sell the, the excedent or the ex ex exceeding power they are generating with solar PVs, etc. But the key part is how that all that is coordinated in a manner uh, in which uh, the reliability uh, of the supply is, is granted, right? And that's one of the key <laughs> challenges for the general, let's say, sector, as, as you all know. But when it comes to, to small uh, groups of, of people trying to trade between them, um, they can not be isolated in most of the cases, and that kind of coordination requires a lot of work with regulators, TSOs, etc. That, uh, I, as far as I know, we are not yet there, okay? Because, as you can imagine, TSOs are not early adopters in in most of the cases, and that's key for me um, uh, to be able to, let's say, have a, a future in five years or so in which there are a lot of um, applications in this regard. I think we've got time for one final question. Um, this is a technical question, but it does have business implications and it's about scalability because there, there's millions of electricity customers and producers, but blockchain is not known for how for, for having a large number of transactions. How can the how can blockchain scale to the level where it can be used by uh, a utility company. Yeah, can I take this one, uh, Paul? Uh, I just, I just, I think, um, typed in, in the chat to respond to this question. So, uh, two, uh, two options from my end. One option is, as, as also uh, Giuseppe mentioned, just store on the chain only the information, only part, the part of the data that you will need in the future to prove your claims. So not every single bit or uh, every single um, data field needs to go on chain. This is also mm, important to be uh, for, for your solution to be compliant with the GDPR regulation. And the other, the other, let's say, uh, way to to solve scalability issues is um, to use uh, the right for for its specific use case consensus mechanism. For example, as as um, Jesus uh, previously mentioned in Enel's web chain, we are uh, using proof of authority. Um, so these, I will not use any of the banned words like validators. Uh, you need a smaller a smaller group of uh, nodes. Uh, fast, this makes the whole process uh, much faster, so it, it can scale and, and meet the demands and needs of a commercial uh, project. 
Thank you. If I can add to consideration uh, on on Johannes uh, already said, uh, I think that uh, other uh, two ways uh, in addition, uh, I fully agree with the topic uh, obviously of data of chain and the consensus mechanism. In addition, one way could be is a new concept to submit transaction on the public network like rollup. So the rollup is a new technique where we can put together some different transaction and uh, have the same evidences in terms of Merkel tree of concatenation of transaction on the main network. And other, other technique that uh, we are studying and uh, some companies uh, uh, are studying uh, regard uh, obviously the the world of uh, improbabilistic uh, uh, consensus mechanism like zero knowledge proof that can uh, support a major scalability of transaction with only the proof of uh, the 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 information and not all all data on on the on the main network. So the just trade off between transparency, full transparency, and the right capabilities to have the all evidences of uh, notarization on blockchain could be a way to to get more scalable uh, the, the the solution and more efficiency more efficiently in uh, in an environment of enterprise application um i think we could talk about this for a lot longer but our, our time is uh, our time is up for for this session um if you do have more questions, I've got the co our contact details on here, and you can also find Yanis and Giuseppe on, on LinkedIn quite easily. Well, I found them quite easily, so uh, I'm sorry I haven't got your details here, but you, you are very uh, contactable. And so I suggest that anybody who's got more questions, uh, I, I would suggest contact people directly. Um, now I'll, I'll pass back to Alex for the, for the final words. Yes, thank you, Paul. And um, first of all, I would like to say to thank also our our guest speakers for this excellent uh, debate and a very interesting topic. We, I, I know we could uh, spend uh, some more hours here, and uh, we had a lot of questions. That shows that it was very interesting. And uh, also, I want to to thank our our attendees, our public that um, that was here, uh, more than 150 people. And um, just to tell you that uh, we are continuing with uh, with these R and R and D sessions. So next month in in April. Um, we'll have in the beginning of, of April, uh, always at Wednesdays, we'll have uh, our next uh, session. So stay tuned for, um, for our next uh, webinar and uh, thank you all and keep safe and have a great afternoon. Bye bye.